morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to start the meeting for today. Thank you for attending. Uh, the topic is called Fishing Selection by Approximated Multinomial Deviants. And this uh, model was uh, the first time that I implement this, this workflow. Uh, what they said in this paper that I use as reference, Feature selection and dimension in dimension reduction for single cell LNA seq based on the multinomial model uh, from the 2019. So, um, uh, as an introduction, uh, the authors of this paper uh, they realized the current normalization procedures uh, that was borrowed from the all LNA seq, such as the log of counts per million and feature selection, uh, high variable genes produce fast variability in dimension reductions. So they propose a multinomial method that including generalized principal component anal analysis called TLMPCA that is for non-normal distribution and feature selection using deviance. Um, this is uh, this was inspired uh, mainly in the uh, in look for better ways to select uh, genes uh, that are highly biological significant in single cell RNA, RNA seq that incorporate the UMIs. Mm, next, uh, well, I was looking for the the main functions to to implement the the method and you can find the, uh, the compatibility for bioconductor is found in scribe, but there are also compatibility in, uh, with several objects that you can look at in several groupers. So but what is the, the Debian selection? Uh, this is, uh, this computes uh, Debian statistical for each of the genes for count data based on the on, on a multinomial null model that assumes that each feature, uh, it means each genes, has a constant rate. So features with large deviance are probably uh, not informative. So these genes that are not very informative uh, usually uh, can be discarded to speed up the analysis because it reduces the memory requirements. So uh, in order to understand uh, a bit more, uh, let's say the, 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 key, the keys of the model, because to implement the model is really very fast and it's easy. But I think that we need to, to be conscious that uh, what is important to implement the model and what, uh, it's, what uh, why the authors found it interesting to propose a uh, this method. So um, authors present in this paper a uh, unifying statistical foundation for single cell RNA data with UMI counts based on a multinomial distribution. Uh, they are key that the multimodial, multinomial model uh, adequately describes negative control data and there is no need to model the zero inflation. So probably one of our questions is what is the zero inflation and why we need to implement a model like this. So uh, next argument the day two is that the mechanism by which PCA on the log normalized UMI counts can lead to distorted low dimensional factors that deal to four discoveries that is a way to say that we have over dispersion and so the over dispersion can inflate the confidence in the model. And so we are like violating the assumptions of the model. So they identified that the source of the frequent observed and this undesirable facts of the fractions of fractions of zeros reported in each of the cells drives to the first principal component in most of the experiments that are based in single cell. Another way to see this is a very old model that is used in economies that um, is used to say that even when the data or the counts are there, we cannot see it because the environment is not good for detect these values. So this is an analogy using hypopotamus 
when, for example, you have zeros because you cannot see the values because they can be like uh, camouflage for the for the environment. For example, you cannot see an hippopotamus that is under the water, or you can confuse it with another kind of animal like a crocodile. But in but the animal is here, but you cannot see. It. So uh, when you have you only can see with there is not a high fraction of seals in the cells. So this is like the diagram, trying to explain this in a more, uh, let's say, abstract way, that when we have uh, under any structure, uh, let's say their structure with a lot of zeros, uh, we can miss uh, the renos unless they are there. So we need to look at, uh, let's say, uh, different statistical models that can deal well with this, uh, let's say, inflation of data. So uh, the issue indeed is that when we have excess of zeros and over dispersion, we need to look for different models that can support this kind of fact. So uh, some important uh, concepts into the model is that in single cellular RNA-seq data, we have indeed an excess of zeros and often the number of zeros in the sample cannot be properly accommodated for the poison or the negative Inovia model that we uh, usually use in most of the packages. So the poison regression models indeed provide a standard framework, but in the practice, the count data are often over dispersed uh, relative to the poison distribution and this is because poison, that is the model that we have here, assumes that the variance in the, the conditional variance of the dependent variable is equal to the mean. But in most of the cases, we can see that the variance is indeed greater than the conditional mean. And this is the phenomenon called over dispersion. So what happens when we have over dispersion in our data is that that means that the assumptions of the model are not met. So we are violating uh, statistical assumptions, hence we cannot trust uh, in the output. So a consequence of this phenomenon is that the standard error can be underestimated and that potentially drives to another phenomenon that it's called overconfidence. So, uh, rejecting the uh, null hypothesis. So I have here a summary of this, just uh, showing that in single cell RNA data, we can have, uh, let's say, an assay with count data. So let's say that when we have, or we anal analyzing only one data set, the assumption can be met and we can model the data with a poison distribution. But when we are uh, having a lot of these data sets and the assumption is violent because we have uh, uh, we have indeed um, let's say a greater uh, let's say the conditional variance is greater than the conditional mean so we are having over dispersed data so when we are having these uh, kind of phenomena we need to look uh, for a more suitable statistical model to uh, identify the, the genes that uh, have this biological and statistical importance that we are looking at. And to uh, present uh, just a, let's say an example of how the, the overconfidence uh, function, either we probably have genes that we think that are highly confident, so it means that in analogy, if you think that you can just jump two columns, but indeed this is an overconfident phenomenon. So under that uh, assumptions, uh, we have as an alternative, the yield MPCA and the deviance residuals to try to, to manage this data. So since the UMI counts, we know that are not normally distributed, even the in the normalized and long transformated, the distance matrix is an is inappropriate, causing PCA to produce uh, distorted latent factors. So, as the authors notice this phenomenon, propose to use of propose the use of PCA for generalized linear models of the GLMPCA. 
One disadvantage, disadvantage that has this model is that it is dependent on an iterative algorithm to obtain the estimate. So this means that this a lot of times is slower than the PCA. So if the computer resources is an issue for you, you have uh, as an alternative to compute the Debian's residuals that provides the fast approximation to the same model. So in order to summarize this, if you are, uh, uh, let's say, implementing a method to select a genes, you can, um, let's say, the standard model is to compute these uh, high variable genes over the log transformator uh, aside. But you have also, if you are looking over dispersed data, you have the alternative to pick up these genes throughout the high Debian model that indeed uh, needs to be performed under the row counts. But if you have computer issues, you should probably use uh, to compute the model uh, under the Debian residuals. And what is this is why is this important? Wait, well, this is important because uh, the PCA, when you are making the dimensionality reduction, it can like uh, deal to, to uh, let's say, projections that have a lot of false of fall positives. So these are going to drive to, or are going to impact also the clustering. So one thing we have the, let's say the, the key uh, let, um, concepts that deals to these uh, packages, to this package. Also the authors say that, uh, that they uh, have not since a while uh, the time to maintain the, the package as it is. So but they have uh, like listed numerous alternative of implementations that can improve the idea that they that they uh, present. So these are some of the packages that they present. If you want to try, um, let's say, the same approach, but with different uh, solutions. So uh, one thing we have all the concepts and ideas and the different packages that we can uh, implement. So I'm going to present this implementation to, to scribe and also, um, I, I I tried to, well, I, I did. I did an implementation using uh, Vision data, Vision data sets, but it takes a lot of time. So I get back to the basic workflow using small data sets. And I add additional information just to present the main idea uh, a, bit, uh, a bit more, let's say, complete. And also you can find here a most wide explanation of why this uh, model works well with single cell RNAC data. And there's a lot of stuff related with the statistical and math uh, approach that you can also type a bit. Now let's go to R. And I'm going to show uh, one example. I'm going, if the time allows, I'm going to present two samples, but at least one. So this is using um, data from the autos that were uh, prepared to present all the, let's say the benefits of the model. So to do this, I have uh, this implemented in my local computer and I'm going to load the required packages here. The uh, ego plot for the visualizations and this is for the clustering and sky for perform the deviance. So uh, I'm going to load the, the data set. This data set, uh, indeed, just to give you context, uh, is a single cell experiment that contains uh, around 50,000 genes in, in almost uh, 4,000 cells. So here in this uh, object, we have PSIs, we have counts, we have low counts and norm counts but we are only use the, the counts because this is the asset that we need to implement the model. Also, uh, it's important to mention that in this data set, they have labeled four different cell types in order to present samples, uh, visualizations of how this works. So next step is to, is to perform the Debian feature selection. 
So to do this, uh, what we do is uh, the first step is to run the genes based on the deviants to help identify these biological genes, the good one. So you need to uh, keep attention that we are using the counts and the, the value that we are uh, requiring it sorted. Um, another important thing here is that, for example, uh, if you are doing different bigger data sets than this, you need to probably to use um, a additional parameters to run this in a parallelized way. <clears throat> so we have noted that, that this is running fast here, and now that the deviance, the values of the, de the deviance are sorted in raw data that is added as a new column that can be either called the binomial deviance or the poison deviance because we have two uh, models available here. So we can see here in the metadata that, that, that we have uh, different columns, but now we have an additional one that is called binomial deviance. So we also uh, are going to add the, the poison deviance to have the two models in the same data set and compare it. So if we look at the, at the data, we have also the binomial, but we have also the poison deviance. What did we, we have been calculated this? Uh, I want to say that the binomial is the default, and also the assay default in the counts. So you not you don't need to be so worried for added, but you need to be conscious what as are you using. Uh, so this, this model is indeed the closest approximation to the multinomial model that we are discussing. But if you have issues with uh, computer resources and you have these big data sets, you can use Poison because it's a bit faster and it uh, the data are pretty similar to the binomial. We also have additional parameters that are important to mention because you can add here a parameter that is called a number or n keep that is to say to the to the model that we just want a particular number of genes to be retained. Um, by default, it's null. Uh, we can also uh, say to the model we we want uh, these uh, these uh, features to be sorted by decreasing order in the deviance. And we also have an additional uh, parameter that is called the batch. If we want to add a batch membership of the observations. So in this case, uh, we are not using uh, these additional factors. We are just throwing the standard uh, argument. Now, uh, probably you are wondering uh, what, what of this model I can use. I Let's say that you don't have issues with the with the computer resources, so you have these two available binomial and deviance. So probably you're curious to know if they are pretty similar. So there are several ways to test this, but this is not a full answer. But you can just uh, pull up the binomial data, uh, the binomial deviance and the poison deviance, and just uh, look at the interquartile. A statistical values to look at if they are pretty similar. So I'm going to pull both, and I'm going to get the summary, the summary of the both models. So you can see that in the binomial and in the poison models, we have pretty interquartile at values in in the in the results. So you can see here that the minimum is too close. The first quartile is also pretty similar. The median the mean and the third quartile, and also we have maximum pretty uh, similar to the in both models. Another way that you can use is just to, um, let's say, plot the values in order to look at where the, the deviance drops in the model. So I'm going to plot this, uh, both the both models here, and let's, that, uh, uh, yes, I have here plots. So I have here the binomial and the poison. Uh, this for this one, if this one. So if we keep an eye to the results, we can see here 
We have here uh, the, the deviance values for each genes, and we have here the ranked genes. This is for the binomial, and this is for the Poisson deviance. So you can see the, the models are pretty similar, but also we can see we use this plot just to identify where is the, where, where drops the deviance in the genes. So these are, let's say, the most informative genes that we can pick up. And probably we should remove these genes from the model if we have uh, issues with the computer resources. So let's say that uh, I see that in thousand, in in the first thousand genes, I see that uh, the deviance drops. So I'm going just to pick up this. I'm going to make a subset of these genes, and I'm going to use it to uh, to make the dimensionality reduction. To, to look at the visualization. Also, I'm using here this subset of the model with two Latin factors in the assay accounts. Um, okay. So here there are, I think, important notes that in large, the, in large data sets, uh, we have an additional like argument that is called mini batch that uh, you can use uh, either a stochastic or memoized uh, parameters just to, uh, let's say, uh, let the model to handle in batches these, uh, to perform the model. These are optional parameters to compute the gradient on the memory constraints, and they are different. So you maybe, if this is your uh, an issue for you, you can just look at each one of the options in order to compute the model. So now uh, in the in the reduced dimensions we have um, added the the model the this this new dimensional reduction and you can see uh, also uh, that we have uh, the the two Latin factors the two PCF factors here one two now to visualize the a structure that we have now um, I'm going to to pull up the the model, the in the, the fit model. So we have here, let's say a summary of the values that we have in this one. So we have we have picked up a uh, thousand genes, and it was performed for the family of, of the of the binomial for point model for poison, and we have also two Latin factors here in this moment. So I'm going to add these uh, values. To the to a data frame, and I'm going to I, I think do this. I jump the line, and and we are going to look at the at the structure in this in this plot. Uh, the reason why we can see exactly these four uh, clusters, let's say, is because uh, in this data set, the authors have labeled. Uh, the same type. So uh, this is just in order to highlight that the values can be well separated by the by the model. So you can see here that I color it by the by the pheno, phenotype ID. So we can see here that we uh, can see the four different uh, pretty well uh, the the B cells. Uh, what is this one? This is the B cells and this is the CD41 sites. We'll separate in the model, even when here is a bit like mixed for these two sets. But indeed, it can capture a well separation of the data. Next, well, uh, this yield MPCA, uh, reduction dimensionality, uh, indeed, if you have large data set, like in the vision data, it's I have only far two areas, so it takes a lot of time. So probably uh, you need to run a, the fast approximation of the model. That uh, the assumption is that we have a constant expression of e each gene across the cells. So uh, we have also two family um, uh, two family models uh, available. That is the deviance the deviance residuals and the Pearson residuals. So uh, to do that, uh, we call this function that is called new residuals. And also I um, 
I uh, specify the assay where I'm going to perform the model and the type of model that I'm going to perform. So uh, let's run it. This is faster than the previous one. And uh, now if we, uh, we, if we plot the residuals for the binomial deviance or the binomial piece of residuals, that is the next step that we are going to do. Um, see that we have here four clusters. So now I'm going to plot again, and you are going to see that we have a pretty similar structure capture in the model. So we here, what we are seeing is that plotting this, we can see the four main clusters reflected in the value, just uh, taking this option. And also we have used the Pearson residuals, we are going to get the same structure. Um, Next step, maybe we want to see this uh, to the PCA model. So I'm going to pick up again the thousand uh, high, uh, high variable, high variable deviant schemes. And uh, here's the form of a PCA uh, of, the, of the Latin factors present in the model. So I'm going to run this for the binomial deviance first. And then for the binomial Pearson. And let's plot it again. That is basically the same exercise shown with data that I did before, but now using the deviance residuals. Mm -hmm. So let's give a moment just to process the data. So as a way of comparison, if you see with the previous one where I used the yield and PCA model, we can see a pretty similar structure when we can see pretty well separated these first two clusters. And indeed, the other two that are a bit mixer, it continued to be a bit mixed. So this is the alternative that we have, where we are, uh, let's say, um, having these over dispersed data. We can just um, use the, the yield model or the alternative model that is uh, throughout the throughout the new residuals for the deviance of, for the Pearson model. Um, so in a way you summarize all these in just a few words. Here. Mm -hmm. So what I can say is that um, this is another example that I pre-compute before, where it's using the variance or the devi deviation. So we have to notice that, that um, one of the main difference in order to highlight this is that the variance, as we know, is the average of the square difference from the mean. But if, when we are implementing the model, we do, the, we do this to the log transformated uh, or the low count aside. So when in the deviation, what we use is the, is the count aside. So this is a very important difference because the deviance is calculated directly in the original values. Uh, so also uh, here I'm just uh, highlighting why the standard deviation can be greater. If this is because when it is squared in, in let's say, uh, the, the square root of decimal values is larger than the original number. So there are, there are a, let's say, a couple of mathematical facts why it can be greater. So uh, that is one of the reasons why we can take this model as most accurate to calculate or, or to identify these uh, genes that are significant or relevant. So also, uh, this is a visualization using vision data set. So you can see that in the deviance, uh, when plotting the deviance, uh, we can also look the, the an approximation of the same data, but here we can identify in this like day. Uh, they are usually related with low counts. And also we can see pretty well separated the data that are co-founders in the model. Um, also, uh, let's say that we cannot like exactly compare directly the models, let's say one by one data, but as both uh, models can be 
let's say uh, you uh, plot it to the PCA models or the GLPC models, the retort the components in decreasing order. So we can examine uh, these to these kind of, of plots, but are not equivalent data value. And, and that's the most relevant things that I have here. Uh, I'm go I'm also going to share later uh, just a few values the change when we are uh, let's say to make the process run in parallel way just to speed the process it can be important because if we don't have enough resources it can throw an error and that's it if you have questions please.